we're going to take you on a trip to Galena, Illinois, a town of 3,800, tucked away in the northwest corner of the state. It's easy to recognize Galena. The architecture is lovely, the scenery breathtaking, the people friendly. You see, in the late 1800s, time forgot about Galena. Progress passed it by. As the mayor says, that's probably the finest thing that ever happened to it. The song being played at Raleigh's restaurant in Galena speaks of a time when life was slow and oh so mellow. Galena townspeople say that time still lives in their town. Mayor Frank Einsweiler puts it this way. What one might say is that fortunately progress passed us by. Galena has a river and hills and lovely 19th century architecture. An ambassador to Belgium lived here. A steamboat captain here. A dry goods merchant here. There is a lot to titillate the eye. Being an artist, I found out that all you needed is to turn around and there was a vista of something to paint. That's Edward G. Kelly. Formerly a Chicagoan, he now runs an antique store on Main Street. Not an uncommon occupation in Galena. Main Street curves a mile and a half through town with buildings vintage 1820s through 1850s. They're filled with people who appreciate old ways, old things. A stained glass artist works in what was the town's first metal front building. Just across the street is Carl Johnson's studio. Carl was once a commercial designer in Hinsdale. Then he saw Galena. Now he's painting watercolors of the town that bewitched him. It's been called the Queen City of the Midwest and one of the last remaining jewels of Victorian architecture and all that kind of stuff. And it's true. If you want to find out more about Galena's past, Carl will send you to Alfie Miller's house. In the 1930s, Alfie started collecting a few pictures of the town. Now, he has 10,000. I have never lived anywhere else, so I don't know what another town it would be like as far as... But to me, I've loved it and I want to see it preserved. That's why I've saved all these pictures. Alfie has pictures of what built Galena, like the lead mines. In fact, the word Galena means lead ore. The town supplied nearly all the country's lead in the mid-1800s. Steamboats built Galena too, hauling lead and other commodities. With the Galena River feeding into the nearby Mississippi, the town was a bustling river port, the largest north of St. Louis. When the French, the Irish, and them learned about the mineral here, they all came over here to get rich quick. See. And of course, we were 20,000 people when Chicago was Fort Dearborn. In 1847, there were 45 grocery stores on Main Street and 30 saloons. Well, the railroads mostly bypassed Galena, and the river started to silt up, and the miners left their lead for gold out west. The town was frozen in time. Nobody could see any future in Galena. And so they didn't invest any money in Galena. That's probably the finest thing ever happened to it. The mayor likes to say that Galena's past is its future. And there's a lot of that to bank on. This is U.S. Grant's home. He moved to Galena right before the Civil War. Right after the war, the townspeople gave their hero this house. It was from here Grant campaigned for the presidency. Most of the furniture is original. This is where he slept, where he ate, where his meals were cooked. We're told he liked corn and pork and beans, and the nearer he came to burning up the meat, the better he liked it. State historian Pete Campbell says there's a reason why Galena supplied the North with nine Civil War generals, Grant included. They knew the right people at the right time, one being Elihu Washburn, who was our congressman that, at that time, who was a very powerful uh, political figure in the Republican Party. If you had peered through this frosty window 90 years ago, you'd have seen the same picture. John Martinson now keeps alive the traditions of the blacksmiths that preceded him in this shop. He bends his steel into everything from weather vanes to sculpture and is a living history lesson for those who come by. 
we came down as tourists and visited the town and really liked the town and uh, then saw the shop and noticed that it wasn't being used and uh, the old blacksmith's son is still in town here and he showed us through and we were very interested in trying it to see uh, how blacksmith would do uh, in this town in this time. Nancy Eberly first came as a tourist too. Now she's written a book about why her family moved to Galena from Evanston. She found a friendliness just as warm and as captivating as the old buildings. Every commercial encounter is virtually a social encounter as well. And you walk in the bank and the teller says, hi, Nancy, and you walk in the drugstore and they, you chat about your children. Alfie Miller knows what Nancy's talking about. You, have, you make your friends, you make your, talk to your neighbors. In Chicago, they tell me they, they don't know who lives next to them, they don't care. They don't want to know even. See, well, we want to know and we sit on the porch and talk to each other and help each other. You may have noticed the townspeople are partial to this place, none more than Carol Ryan Sullivan, who was caught in Galena's spell a few years ago. We'll leave you where we began at Raleigh's restaurant, with Carol Sullivan singing of a town that sounds a lot like hers. I have to find a place, I've got to find a place, where everything can be the same, with streets that I can know, and places I can go, where everybody knows my name. Weiler says that the trick is to attract tourists to Galena without becoming a tourist trap. As it is now, 85% of the town is considered a National Historic District. That means no building's exterior can be changed without going through City Hall. The mayor says Galena will keep its charm as long as the person in his chair enforces those preservation laws. Next on Two on Two, a report on some youngsters who may be building their future with toy bricks. <laughs> 